Welcome to the show. We have Lori and Daniel Hale from Getting Dirty Podcast. Tell me about how you got started on your show and obstacle racing. Sure. All right, I'll let you go first, Daniel. <laughs> well, <laughs> um, I do other podcasts, so I, I like to I like talking. I like podcasting a lot. I do a podcast about uh, Disney theme parks, and uh, Lori kind of did this had this like midlife crisis or something happened in your life where you're just like okay I'm gonna start like doing obstacle races and stuff like your brother like was like oh check out these videos and that they're obstacle races it's tough mutter right so I'm just like oh, all right so they went they did it I, I didn't do it I, I was kind of on the sidelines sort of as a you know cheering them on and everything like that and then um Watching everybody do it, I kind of got pumped about it. So I'm like, hey, you know, maybe maybe I can do this. And Lori, you know, she loves it, and I really enjoy it too. And I already do podcasts. I thought, hey, why don't we do a podcast about, you know, mud runs? There's, there doesn't seem to be a lot out there, so why not? Let's just do it. So here we are. Yeah, it's yeah. impossible to kind of sit on the sidelines. Like the only one I've actually done so far is Warrior Dash. But I started the show because it's so cool and everybody is so welcoming in the community. And so now I have a bunch of races listed, you know, on my uh, on my schedule for 2013. But um, so that's pretty much how you got started. And you know, this was supposed to be kind of like my Valentine's Day show, and I was going to have several couples, you know, elite racers and stuff like that on. Um, but tell me, how do you guys manage uh, your family? with the uh, mud running, running, and how does that work? Does that work? You know, it's actually, it's actually really, really, really difficult. difficult. It's, it's not easy. Not easy. We, have, we, we have little kids, little kids. and, and so, so that, that, of course, bringing them, bringing them into the mix, into the mix is, is challenging. challenging. It's, hard. it's hard to find time to do the podcast, but we're very, very lucky where both of our parents actually live close by, so we're able to to use them as, as free babysitting, and, you know, and we, we try to try to limit the amount of time that, that we have to use them to watch the kids, but that's pretty much what we do. So, but there are times when we are going to races where, you know, there's a great family atmosphere, so we're able to bring the whole family with us along with the grandparents and the kids, so that works out as far as when we actually go and do races together. And how old are, and your, how kids? Old are your kids? Oh, they are, gosh, how old are they now? They're, they're just having birthdays, so we have, right now we have uh, four, six, and eight. Okay. Okay. I have a. I have a almost three, almost three, almost eight, almost, eight, and, and almost seven. Almost seven. Okay. okay. All right. So you know the pain. <laughs> yes. Yes. <laughs> Although mine are Although all mine are all girls. Ah, so we have two girls and one boy. Okay. okay. But you see, it's interesting trying to balance the the mm-hmm. obstacle racing and the kids. Like uh, just yesterday, uh, I was supposed to do Tough Mudder with Lori, and our son broke his arm, oh. and so. Oh. You know, Lori went with her brother, and they did the Tough Mudder, and I had to stay behind, unfortunately. So it was gonna, it was supposed to be uh, my very first Tough Mudder yesterday, and uh, I unfortunately I I had to stay behind. So sometimes real life does get in the way. Oh, absolutely! Oh, absolutely! But that's kind of why I'm rocking my headband right now. Yeah, <laughs> 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 thanks a lot. Tell me a little bit about yesterday's Tough Mudder. Uh, it was yesterday's Tough Mudder. It was in okay. Temecula, okay. California. It's today. It was they're they're doing one today too. But I ran yesterday. It was eleven miles. It was actually the same venue that Spartan Race just did their super ad a couple weeks ago. So I ran that. So it was really interesting to see how both events use the course very differently. But it was a great race. Very well organized. You know, there were no snafus that I saw. We were able to do a few interviews on the on on the at, at the event, which was great. And it was a really great course. We actually got to experience some of the newer obstacles that we hadn't seen before in previous races, so that was a lot of fun. Can you tell me about the new obstacles? Sure, a couple new ones that they had they've had them at other events, but this is the first time we've seen them in Southern California. One of them is called Just the Tip. It's very similar. <laughs> I didn't come up with the name. It's very similar to the traverse wall that Spartan has, except for it's a, a, a long two by four uh, across uh, on the top and then little steps on the bottom. And it's over water. So you kind of have to work your way across that wall without falling into the water. Uh, another new one that they did that we haven't seen was called Dark Lightning. Now, this one was really interesting. <laughs> they had dug a, a, a huge 
ditch in the ground and had black tarp uh, uh, over the ditch and then covering it. So you actually are having to crawl through these little holes uh, into, into complete blackness uh, with electric wires over your head. So, uh, uh. yeah, so the goal is to try to, to kind of, you know, army crawl all the way through without getting, you know, shocked. <laughs> so those were a couple of the new ones that they had at, at this event that I hadn't seen before. So that was really cool that they were able to uh, shake it up a little bit. I've been following your fitness over the last few podcasts. How did it go with this mutter? You know, this race... It, by California standards, it was actually super, super cold this weekend, mm-hmm. and and it was it, it got down into the mid 30s, which for us is really cold. I know for some of you Eastern people, that's probably you know shorts weather, but it was really cold for us. So we definitely went a lot slower than we would have if it was a if it was the warmer weather, because you know you're just shivering as soon as you got out of any of the water obstacles. Um, there were a lot of steep inclines, so of course there weren't too many people running up those. There's a lot of people walking up those. But for most of the time, uh, you know, when we could, we, we tried to run. I mean, we weren't sprinting by no means. We were just trying to keep it to an easy jog just to try to keep our, our core temperature up so we didn't freeze to death. <laughs> yeah, I don't know how it is with the Tough Mudders and uh, over on the East Coast, if, especially like in the middle of the country, like if it's flat or not. Uh, the ones out here, they do it in the mountains. So there's lots and lots of steep uphill inclines. Mm-hmm. Uh, in the races out here, you know, when you watch these videos, they're showing these guys running and they look all badass and everything like that. They're not showing uh, the, the the everyone walking up up the hills <laughs> because trust me, everybody walks it um, except for like maybe that that first wave of like the it's, it's, the hardcore guys. Well, yeah, you usually see. I mean, in every wave, you have a few crazies who are running up those steep hills, but for the most part, you know, a lot of people are walking. I would say ninety five percent. Yeah, it, <laughs> that makes me feel good. That's why I'm saying that. Just to make like, oh, okay, I'll walk it. Yeah. Sorry. Yes, many of the Midwest events are held on courses that are more flat, including Florida and the East Coast. But when you start to get into the Appalachian Range in the Mid Atlantic and Northeastern areas, the mountains can be quite steep and challenging even if they're not held at high altitude. Yeah. So we've got some pretty good hills here, so so those are fun. Adds to the challenge of the race, I think. That's excellent. What races do you have coming up? Uh, the next big race we have, we're actually going to be at the Urban Warrior Dash, which is going to be their very first event of that series, so we're really excited to be there and represent there. Uh, what else do we have going on? Gosh, uh, there's I'm, I'm really toying with the idea of doing the Spartan Beast up in Malibu. That's going to be in August. So I've already done the Sprint and the Super, so that would be my trifecta. That's kind of my goal. Very, very, very. I'm going to be doing uh, the Disneyland Half Marathon in August. That's going to be my very first half marathon. Uh, and then we've got a, a, some other 5Ks thrown in there, some local races and stuff. And I'm still kind of working on my my race calendar this year. I don't have it completely shored up, so who knows what else is going to pop in there. We're hoping to do Tough Mudder in Vegas. Uh, they say it's in Vegas, but it's really like 100 miles away from Vegas. But um, we're hoping to do – we might do that one just sort of to make up for the fact that I didn't get to do the one yesterday. So we might we might travel down to Vegas so, so I can at least do Tough Mudder this year. And what do you think about, like, the Epic Racing Arena? That'll be in Vegas in December. Yeah, I'm really interested to see how that's going to turn out. I mean, of course, I wish them a lot of success. So so we're excited to see what's going to happen with that. And there's a lot of buzz around the obstacle racing community, not so much like some of the mud runs and challenges, but there a lot of people are talking about trying to get a league together like they've got in Australia and putting together like an association or something and shooting for the Olympics. What do you guys think about that? I think that's a great idea. You know, it's funny. When I had first heard that they were looking at making obstacle racing an Olympic sport, I kind of raised my eyebrows and thought, hmm, how's that going to work? But then just as I was watching, uh, you know, the Winter X Games, you know, and I see the snowboarders and the snowmobiles out there, I was thinking, you know what? I think that's, that's a perfect fix. Place, place for that, for that to be. be. I mean, it, I mean, it really is an extreme sport, sport. And, I, and, and I think, think that it would be great to make it in the Olympics. 
sport. I mean, everything has to start somewhere, and I think I think I think it is a true sport, and I would love to see it go to that level. I would not be at that level, but <laughs> but I think it'd be great for others to bring it to that level. And so, what what's coming up on your next podcast? Well, the next podcast we're gonna do uh, we're gonna cover the Tough Mudder that we just did, and we like I said we were able to get a couple of interviews there. And uh, we're going to have a, a special video of the week that will feature, which will also be all about that Tough Mudder. So it'll all be Tough Mudder related. We're all, we also got a bonus coming up as well with, um, who's that, that, uh, that race you just interviewed? Uh, well, I have a, right, we're probably going to do a bonus episode. We interviewed a race called Hard Charge, and they're located in the Midwest. I don't know if you're familiar with them or not. They're just starting out. But one of the cool things about their race that they're going to be doing is they're going to actually have a televised heat. So they're going to take their racers and, you know, their elite racers that have gone through, and then they're going to take those top finishers and then televise that last heat. So that'll be really interesting to see, and they're going to have some cash prizes and stuff. So I'm really excited to see how that turns out for them. I just became aware of that company when they started following me on Twitter. So I went to their website and saw that they were starting to work on some TV things and having broadcast come to their races. It's great. We're actually uh, working with them. We should have a contest coming up really soon, so so, uh, stay tuned for that. Which states in the Midwest are they holding those events? Excuse me. Um, I uh, they're in three different states. I want to say they're in uh, Kansas. Uh, oh, uh, where's far North Dakota? And I don't remember what the other state is. I didn't interview them, so I don't. I didn't talk to them yet. So <laughs> I, I haven't even heard it yet. Yeah. So I know they're definitely in in those two states. I don't remember what the third state was though. Well, that sounds pretty cool. I look forward to hearing that podcast and all your future podcasts coming up. I want to thank my guests this evening, Lori and Daniel from Getting Dirty Podcast. Thanks for being on the show. Hi, thanks you betcha. so much. Bye. Peace. <laughs>